Welcome to Before After Omu. This is our seventh episode in which we explore the occult of 1970 and 80s Japan and the very first day of Omu Shinrikyo. We introduced the rush hour of the gods in our first episode, which talks about the post war period of religious freedom and interest in new religions. This episode picks up from there and talks about the surge of interest in occult in the late 1970s and 80s. I am Atsushi Sakahara. I am a, a filmmaker based in Kyoto, Japan, and I am a survivor in the Saringas attack、uh, in Tokyo 1995. And I'm Pearl Chan. I'm a film and birth worker based in Hong Kong. Before we start today, I want to ask you to please rate and review our podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen. We work very hard on bringing you the truth about this terrible cult and Shoko Asahara. Please support us with a few minutes of your time. Thank you. As with the last few episodes, our research relies heavily on the work on Humihiko Takayama's book, Birth of Asahara. Asahara, no tan, Asahara Shoko no Tanjo, which has not been translated from Japanese to English yet. At the end of the last episode, Chizuo Matsumoto had just adopted the first name Shoko and had been given the idea to redirect his dreams of becoming a politician to become a religious man. To me, these two career choices seem far away, but if you look at it in the way Nishiyama, his mentor and friend, laid it out for him, Both specialize in instilling belief into people. You just need a lot less money to be a religious guru. Today, we'll also get a chance to meet three of the women who would take on major roles in the cult as the organization developed. <laughs> If you are a, a, a victim, you are a victim. You're not a journalist. So, this is a good thing. I'm not a good thing. I'm not a good thing. So, when we think about Om, we usually think about Shoko Hasahara, the guru, and then the other men who were arrested and executed with him. Or we might think about Fumihiro Joyu, the man who had then branched off to create a less guru oriented Om, or Hiroshi Araki, the subject of Atsushi's documentary Me and the Cult Leader, who took over Om proper, now called Aleph. But as I learned this week, Om started with women. Om started actually with six women, plus Chizuo. Chizuo Matsumoto, who at this point is transitioning into his new name, is known as Shoko Matsumoto or Shoko Asahara quite interchangeably. Has rented a space in Shibuya, which is downtown Tokyo. Like he told Nishiyama, he has started a yoga dojo and a publisher there. Most of his students were people he met in Agonshu, including some of the women we'll talk about today. As we mentioned, Agonshu doesn't have a huge physical component, so it makes sense that some people other than Chizuo were frustrated with that. And so when something pops up that is in the same vein as what you're already believing, but has a physical part, something that makes you feel like you're moving forward or, or moving at all, there is an audience for that. This part of our story starts in June of 1985. It's a characteristically hot June day in Tokyo. A young woman in a suit visits the publisher Shueisha. She introduces herself as a student at a new yoga dojo and is hoping to arrange an interview with her teacher at the dojo. The young woman is Mayumi Yamamoto, a former Agonshu member and now part of the inner circle of Shoko Matsumoto. She was born in 1954, so she is 31 at this point. She is from Shibuya area in Tokyo. She graduated from a junior college, a college、uh, for two years. And so on this June day, she goes to the office of the publisher Shueisha and she manages to have a meeting with an editor of、uh, Playboy. Uh, she invites the editor to come observe her teacher. She tells him that her teacher has mastered levitation since February that year and would be able to demonstrate for him in about a month. She shows him a picture of her teacher levitating. Can you come write about him? 
She asks. So this picture, the editor's eyes go immediately to the speedos that Shoko is wearing. He's seated in a lotus position, his hair is ruffled. Together with his body language and expression, it's clear to the editor that he's jumping on a sort of trampoline. Um, okay, Atsushi, you want to take a look at the photo? I, I can find it. I, I saw it, you know, many times, but uh, okay. Let's Asahara, see, Asahara right? Levitation. <sighs> okay, I'm looking at it now. What do you see? <laughs> it's a... Uh... Stupid, right? It's stupid. You know what? There is a, uh, uh, we have a one, uh, uh, attorney, Taro Takita. He is enemy of Asahara, okay? He is so anti Omo. And he is, I think, now at this moment, uh, taking care of Asahara's, uh, fourth daughter now. Okay. And I was on TV with him too, you know, once. And, and uh, he shows the reputation by himself too. <laughs> this is how he does, and this is a trick. So that's this is a very stupid. But uh, yeah, I don't know why, but uh, many people really like this picture and then be start believing him, right? When I look at this photo, I think it's it's pretty funny, like the amount of effort it takes him. I mean, he's <laughs> supposed to be like meditative and calm, and and you think when somebody is. Yeah. Um, levitating, it means that there's a lightness in their body, but there's so much, there's just so much energy there in in that right. um, levitation. It doesn't yeah. look peaceful. Um, so after seeing this picture, 10 days later, the editor goes to the dojo, um, which is on the fifth floor of a Shibuya building, right? So he's like walking all the way up and then he walks in and then the yoga class is just disbanding. The class has about 10 students in it, ranging from kids from middle school to young adults. And then a young man comes out to greet the editor. The young man comes out to greet to the editor. He says, thank you for coming. I'm Mr. Matsumoto. I am running this dojo. And he hands the uh, editor a name card on the card. It says, Shoko Asahara. It's my pseudonym for work, he said. And the editor Later told Fumihiko that his first impression was that this man was quite shy. He seems to be new to using this name Shoko Asahara pseudonym and uh, hadn't quite felt comfortable with it yet. There was a newness to the way he spoke and introduced himself. You know, the dojo was in a 10 tatami room, which is about 16.5 uh, square meters separated by a heavy curtain. There, were, there was a small room for an office where he, the editor saw a number of books on Buddhism and yoga in English. And a copy of uh, uh, Hitler's uh, Mein Kampf, too. And on the floor, there are a number of stones arranged in a circle. The stone is a uh, uh, hirokane, you know, and uh, he, it's a very holy stone for them. And uh, he explained that with those stones, you know, you can progress better in meditation and practicing, you know. At this point, another young woman enters the room and joins them. She has thick, black, long hair, which would stay her trademark for many years to come. And she has quite a gentle smile on her face. When I think about this smile, like reading about it, it, it reminds me of the sort of smile that a born again Christian has, you know, looking at you in pity as they, you know, bask in the love of Jesus and you're like this unsaved fool. And so, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so she was too happy, you know. Pardon? But she was maybe too happy. Yeah. She was too, yeah. Have you seen... Some people do, though. Have you seen Secret Sunshine? No. It's a Korean film. Um, Lee chang Dong, yeah. the guy who made Burning. It's one of his early films. And the woman in uh -huh. it, she loses her husband and she loses her son. And then she joins the church. And then, like, she has that... It's exactly that smile, you know? It's that, like, God loves yeah. me smile. Anyways, that's kind of what Hitako right. Ishii <laughs> looks like, right? She's like, God loves me I know. and his name is right. Shoko Asahara um, but yeah, yeah that's Hisako Ishii you know what the similar 
similar oh you are so pity uh, it's so pity to see you are not in that attitude is also you feel from Hiro, Hiroshi too he looks he looks in a really pain nice but he has some sort of a that feeling even to me right when I started reading about Hisako Ishii's story, it's kind of understandable how she found herself this way. So Hisako Ishii was born in 1980, uh, so at the point of the story, she's 25. She's from Yokohama originally, which is another town outside of Tokyo, uh, about an hour away by train these days. She had gr- wanted to. G- she wanted to go to university after she graduated high school, but her parents basically forbade it, and instead sent her to a junior college, like basically a secretarial school. She was married young, and when she found Om, she was working at an insurance company where her colleague Eriko Ida invited her to join a yoga class. If you just look at her life story, you can sort of see that she is. A person who was never given the opportunity to fulfill what she believed was her potential. You know, she wanted to go to university and was basically told, like, you can't because you're a girl, you have to go to secretary school. And then she goes to an insurance company and, and just is a secretary. And then, like, spoiler alert, but she becomes the minister of finance, right? She She's, she's uh, Shoko Asahara's personal secretary she's managing finance she's you know fundraising and the truth is like she's pretty good at her job because another spoiler like ohm ends up amassing a huge fortune there's no reason why she couldn't have gone to university like she's obviously very smart um and and she chizuo asahara um might have might actually be the first person who's ever believed in her who's actually made her feel like she can do all the things that she knows she can do. And to have that mixed with spiritualism, to have that mixed with this idea idea of being saved, of being emancipated, of being special, um, beyond this world that she'd been forced to exist in a certain way, it's understandable. It's really understandable. To me, it's really understandable. So my question to you was, at this point, like, where is his family? It isn't well documented when he stopped going home, but we do know his children do grow up in the cult, and his wife writes for the publications and is an active member throughout the life of the cult. So whatever is happening, you know, is not complete a breakup. You know, they the, 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 his wife and the kids stayed in uh, stayed in touch or in touch with uh, 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 Chizuo and the cult. I met uh, Chizuo's daughter. Oh, really? Which one? Number four? Number three? Third one. The uh, very active one. Third one. Rika is her yes. name? Yes. Erika, yeah. Mm. What was that yeah, experience? She was sitting right there. Yeah, she she was uh, sitting in the a, uh, a you know uh, right next to me Ma, no, but the, me and her in between there is a, some uh, corridor in the in the court that was the day Chizuo was sentenced to uh, death penalty and she didn't react you know I didn't even know who she was but huh? was she quite young yeah like uh, maybe elementary or junior high that was uh, 16 years ago right yeah yeah, and, and we also see pictures of them in the cult later on, like, in all the garments. So the children are definitely, like, brought back into the organization at a later point. But in this case, like, they're mostly they're mostly out in Funabashi. Right, I think so. So Eriko Ida invites Hisako Ishii to the yoga class, which it's so normal, but um, but this was not a regular yoga class right and so Hisako Ishii meets Chizuo right actually still the yoga is one way to recruit a new member now by I'm sure you know what uh, if you if you want to join the Omu is uh, uh, you know do you know the Mixi that is a Japanese SNS once it was very popular okay 
What is SNS? Mm, social network service, you know, like uh, Facebook, something like uh, that. Okay. Japanese one, right? And then, yeah, it's, it's, you don't have to reveal your true name, right? You can have an alternative name, right? And then write up yoga for your hobby in your profile, right? They will come to you. And they'll find me? Yeah. And I was attempting to be recruited for my documentary, so I created. Nobody really contacted me for that. I actually, I interviewed a young man who just left the Aleph, Kalent Omo. I was introduced by uh, uh, Hikari no wa, Joyu, because he, he tried to in, help me. So I did, uh, you know, I don't have a, a record, but uh, you know, and I didn't record, I, I, I was not allowed to record. So, but I interviewed with him like four or five hours, right? How, who he was and, and then as a preliminary research to shoot this documentary, okay? To find out what it was. And then the way he was, he joined the OMU, is contacted by a, a Mixi, a very popular Japanese uh, social network service. And would you be interested in yoga? Of course, he wrote he's interested in yoga, right? And uh, some, I don't know, good looking or uh, bad looking, but uh, very soft spoken, nice lady comes and uh, invited and had a chat and then then he, she invited him to the dojo. That's how he did, yeah. Yes, so not long after meeting Chizuo, Hisako eventually leaves her husband and job and commits herself fully to Omunokai. She even convinces her sister to join her and her sister leaves her life too and joins Omunokai with her one-year-old baby. Yeah, in the 90, in, in the 70s and 80s, Okaut was booming in Japan. Did you feel that in the 70s? Did you feel like there was like magic and there was like like a like a culture shift towards the occult? Personally, I'm I'm a very I'm yeah, I'm very critical, you know. <laughs> I'm not a really fun boy. Oh well, well, you know. So I I wasn't really. No, although I am a grandson of a priest, but I don't believe in the God, you know. <laughs> although I went to Catholic school, I don't believe in God, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I am, uh, but, you know, not like a, a sense of magic in there, but more like, a, you know, during the time, we were looking for a method or technique, right? I think. More technique, you know, because it's it's sort of a, you know what the test driven country in Japan was. Yeah, and people, more test driven country. People also had more disposable income. That's very true, and then also the you know we were looking for mnemonics and how to memorize things, right? Too too much competition, and then you know that's exactly how the uh, Asahara. Uh, hooked up so many young people, right? It's it's all part of this interest in, in um, like we said, like Yuri Geller and Nostradamus, like this sort of importation of these ideas along with like tarot cards and fortune telling. And if you think about this in a sense of like trying to self-actualize, like trying to improve, um, it, it kind of like ties in with what Atsushi, what Atsushi and I have said throughout this series about the way people think about progress in Japan, right? This sort of like, if I pass this level, I pass this level, I become this. Like, it's a very hierarchical... Yeah, and, and people are like kind of looking for shortcuts and they're kind of looking for like interesting routes to these sort of ideas of success. Um, and also things that are outside of these ideas, right? So like the occult, aliens become a big thing and it's not like it's just a fringe interest right there's also this woman named Miyuki Hatayama which Atsushi you can actually take over but I just wanted to say she's so interesting right <laughs> she's like yeah it's, actor, it's so, so and cool then she's be... like the wife of a politician Yukio Hatayama yeah. who's actually known as an alien right because he looks kind of funny yeah yeah he did like yeah yeah so he became He's... prime minister in 2009 uh, so she would regularly contribute to the occult magazine Moo, 
which started in 1979. And there was this interview with the editor, and the editor was like, yeah, our primary audience is, like, primary school children. And you get the sense that it's, like, not very serious, right? Like, if your primary audience is, like, 12-year-olds. Um, and, and so she claimed to have known Tom Cruise in a past life, when he was Japanese, of course. Um, and, and also to have been taken to Venus in her sleep by aliens. She said, oh, it's very green there. So back to the editor sitting with the Chizuo, Hisako Ishii and uh, Mayumi Yamamoto. He thinks that uh, what he performed, he showed, was okay and interesting enough. And then comes back to two weeks later with his cameraman to witness the levitation. Then two weeks later with his photographer, Chizuo removes his jacket and sits down in lotus position wearing only his speedos. The editor notices that in the last two weeks, Chizuo has lost a lot of weight, and one of the members tell him that Chizuo has been fasting for this day. Chizuo then begins. Okay, Atsushi, this is actually where I stop understanding what you're what you said. So basically, he uses a long piece of cloth, and then moves it side to side in his belly to clean it. So the moving sounds to me like bandhas, um, which is like a yogi breath, uh, a sort of lock. Um, but the cloth, I have no idea. But you sent me videos, so I was hoping we could actually watch yes. them together. Um, because right. it looked kind of scary. So do you mind? So, so yeah, I'm fine. But it's, I thought, I don't know, but I thought that's a qu- pretty much a yoga thing, you know? I, yeah. you, are you not familiar with this? No, I've never seen it. I'm so scared. Yeah? What so is... I'm watching it now. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> gross! Oh! Where has that I saw been? it. I, I saw want you, to see you know, her actually uh, put it in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? How did uh, he get it in? He put it back. She put it back, right? She he does. See, I don't see, right? Yeah. She, she, ah, uh, she putting out, putting out. Maybe you can try, it, you know, tonight. I don't want know. to. Thank you. <laughs> oh, she feels happy, huh? So she you doesn't know, put but, it uh, in. So she doesn't put it in. You know what? Yeah. Now, right? Nowadays, we have a YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. And we have some information. And uh, I am familiar with what they are doing, meaning I know what they are doing, right? Right. Maybe because I did the research on Omo. Okay, I'm watching the other video now. Yeah. That is uh, I, I disgusting to me. Really? I I'm so do. scared. That's I why I haven't seen it. Okay, so this is the breathing. Naori. The guy shows, right? Yeah, he's just showing us breathing, right? But then he does he put the does he put the white cloth in his belly? No. No, okay. That's a separate. So but how uh, do... basically what the Asahara showed did is this, you know. But how do you Before... like how do you put it in? The uh, uh, cloth? Yeah. Just swallow, you know. You wanna see it? I, I can look for. What was the name of that thing? You know what? I'm okay. I'm okay. Let's You're okay, just keep right? going. <laughs> you know, you, they, they just swallow, right? It's not with the laser, right? Yeah. If it's a magic, it, it is with the laser, you know? You know? Mm. You know what? The reaction you showed is quite similar to. What Hiroshi's father did, or parents did. Now we know what it is, right? Around the time, they don't know. They have no. They had no idea, right? Okay, I found. I found a book on this. Okay, there are two methods of gastric cleansing: Gla- gastric auto lavage and gastric cloth cleansing. So this is gastric cloth cleansing. So gastric cloth cleansing is a special method of gastric cleansing. If there is any accumulation of excess mucus, unused juices, and debris, they are completely eliminated by this process. It is an excellent process of internal massage of the esophagus and stomach. Several kinds of automatic movements of the gastric musculature cause the gastric gastric musculature mucusa mucusa 
mm, to come into direct contact with the cloth swallowed, causing them to be properly massaged. This massage stimulates circulation and the vital activities of the mucous membrane. In the gastric cloth cleansing, a long, clean, and narrow piece of fine cloth is necessary. The usual length is about 20 feet and 3 inches tall, 3 inches, and, and width 3 inches. The cloth should be first boiled for a while and soaked in clean, cool water and then gradually squall swallowed. Of course, the whole piece of cloth should not be swallowed. About 10 inches of the cloth should always be kept outside the mouth, like a tampon. After the desired length of the cloth is swallowed, it should be slowly and gently withdrawn by using both hands. When the process is mastered, the swallowing only takes a few minutes. Ooh. Yeah, according to the book, Asahara did the uh, more than a couple of times, I think. Uh, at the initial mm -hmm. stages, it is better to practice it more frequently. Fre frequently, so maybe Asahara was new to it, uh, two or three times <laughs> a week. Mm, that's not mm. very many. Many of the author students, both in India and Sweden, have practiced it for a long time with very satisfactory results. Mm. Uh, okay, good for them. Yeah. So as far as I remember, okay, he now he now he after do, did those things, right? And he tried to levitate, and then he sit on the weight. You know, because uh, weight, you know, weight is the proper noun, right? To the to measure, right? Right. He put he sit on the weight because hmm? a scale, yeah. I'm sorry. So he he sit he sat on the scale with the lotus position, right? The scale was brought by the editor because he truly can levitate that his weight is going to be zero, right? And then. For a long time, quiet and silence, and uh, uh, you know, Asahara's weight was a uh, 6.9 kilogram, and he is a uh, 175 centimeter tall. It's it's a little not small guy in Japan, right? And nothing happens for a while. And uh, the funny thing is, then for all of a sudden, uh, he jumps up, you know, jumps up, right? Meaning. <laughs> Falling down again immediately, staying for less than a second in the air, and uh, and the cameraman took a photo from him from the uh, low angle, right, to make sure that he is up in the air. And after he lands for the last time, you know, he said to his audience, meaning his members. Ah, I was up in the air for a second, and I feel like my body is lighter than the last time. What do you think, you know? And of course, those people are his members, and he says, yeah, I didn't hear any noise when you drop. And uh, there's no problem, right? And, you know, floating or having a backup from his uh, followers, right? It is a scam, right? Con artist, right? So, you know... Uh, but this is the moment of the truth, right? The funny thing is, since then he never tried to levitate. And the only that picture was introduced. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, he has long hair for much of his career, but in that picture he has short hair. So it's like he levitated that one time when he was quite a young man, you know, still quite slight, but then he put on a bunch of weight and a bunch of hair and he never levitated again. Right. Yeah, so this is June 1985 when the editor comes to visit, but ve but Weekly Playboy doesn't run the story until February 1986. I mean, it's interesting that they run it in any case because obviously it's fake, but in the meantime, between June and February, the PR machine of Om Shinrikyo is functioning well and good. They're they're working hard. Uh, they write into another. They write into a number of other occult magazines, including Twilight Zone, and they write about Asahara's levitation, attaching photos. They also start to place an ad in occult magazines and counterculture magazines about Om no Kai, which eventually they rename Om Shinsen no Kai. And the difference being the Shinsen, which we talked about last time, means deity or fairy. So I think around this time, uh, Asahara claims to have become enlightened. What does no kai mean? It means group. No right? kai meaning no meaning a possession, right? So or in the oath in English, right? 
Mm-hmm. Kai means association. Association, yeah. So the Om Association, Om being like the Om of yoga. Uh, so Om Shinsen no Kai is like the Om, like f- you know. Google actually has it translated as like the Mountain Wizard Club, but I think it's actually just Deity Club That's right. or Gleity Association. Right. Yeah. I think so too. That that is more accurate. So by November 1985, he had around 50 members, and yeah, the group had growing. You know, and、uh, that's where the, we will leave him today. In the mile second, he is above the scale, on top of the world. You know, he was up in there now. You know, yeah, levitating. levitating you know, he's levitating at this minute. <laughs> okay, okay. How do you feel about what know, we've learned know, today? If I say this, maybe I'm gonna be chased after by even a peaceful Christian. You know, this is a moment of the truth of the、uh, miracle, right? He created a miracle, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Atsushi, only yeah,、okay. Jesus can judge. <laughs> oh, all right, so you know, see, <laughs> but that's the the moment、uh, he started. Really, he started becoming a guru, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really obvious that he took advantage of the context. You know, the interest, the market. He took advantage of the magazines he could advertise and. Suddenly, he had all these young women who found an aim in their life,、uh, and and we'll get into that more because these women are actually major figures in the cult.、Um, also, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just so interesting that the first members and then also and they stayed, right? They stayed. Asaha. Oh, we didn't even get time to go to Eriko、uh, Ida, but but maybe hopefully sure, we'll, we'll cover、try. her next episode. And、uh, we will, and、uh, and also that、uh, you know that、uh, now、uh, Asahara knows how to create a legend by his book or using mass media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's discovered publishing. Then, yeah. I can't wait to talk about his relationship with Weekly Playboy. <laughs> yeah, and then also he learned how to put a, you know,、uh, advertisement and pay money to the、uh, Okaruto、mm-hmm. magazines, right? So now we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, now the whole move started,、uh, you know, from very embryonic stage to、uh, maybe a, like a almost baby now, you know. Yeah, like you can、yeah. see its fingers and, and toes.、Uh, yeah, the, exactly. And then we will talk about uh, uh, how he started utilizing this、uh, technique or method or systems. But、uh, this is、mm-hmm. exactly where mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. started out, right? So as as we leave Shoko Asahara today, how long before we don't automatically revert to calling him Chizuo Matsumoto, right? Shoko Asahara, Shoko Asahara. He has a fledgling cult, starting to get into specialty magazines and media. And the next episode will talk about the cult.、Um, and next episode will talk about the cult leading up to its being registered as a religion, and the continual development of his latest business venture. Please listen and subscribe wherever you listen. Review and rating helps other people find us. Thank you for listening. Reach out to us on Twitter. At Cult Leader and me. Okay, thank you, Atsushi.